Hey guys, Patrick here with you. Welcome to the Art Marketing Podcast, and we're all the way up to episode three, I guess. I guess technically it's episode two, because we made episode one, the intro episode, the zero episode. But welcome to episode two. Fired up to have you guys with us. On episode one, thank you for all the incredible feedback. I uh, was absolutely blown away. If you guys have not had a chance to listen to episode one, highly recommend you do that. Um, it was about some online and offline art selling tactics with artist Kim Virgil. Um, and we've really just blown away by the feedback and, and incredible amount of props to Kim because she, she, she just has some amazing techniques in there. So highly recommend you listen to that one. And, you know, we're motoring right along on this podcast and we're kind of searching at this point for what, what the blend of content is going to be that's going to be most beneficial for you guys, our listeners, to help you on your journey to start selling more art online. And, you know, what's that combination look like? Are they shorter episodes, longer episodes? Are they interviews um, or solo shows? What, what's going to be the most valuable? What's going to feel right? Or is it going to be a combination of them all? So today I'm going to run with the solo show. And I think I'm going to address on today's podcast what I know just, you know, just from working at Art Storefronts is pretty much one of the biggest hot button items out there, the biggest you know, uh, the lightning rod of, of questions and conversations. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking, of course, about Facebook ads and yes, by extension, Instagram ads. And let me start by saying I am so incredibly fired up about this topic and so fired up to get into it. I, I've been running Facebook ads for years and years and years. And I spent well into the mid six figures on them on, on campaigns I've had under management and have seen a Great deal of success and also a tremendous amount of failure along the way and a tremendous amount of money wasted. So I've cut my teeth in this for a long period of time and I think I can really offer you guys some great insights into how you can potentially make it work. And let me tell you, I'm fired up for you guys. I think, you know, not only is it, is it in my opinion, without question, the, the, the one area that that most art sellers should be focusing on to generate traffic to their websites facebook and instagram ads when you go the paid route but i also think it lends itself so incredibly well to art sellers as a niche um, what are you guys selling you're selling by nature a extremely visual product and facebook is in instagram are platforms that are completely driven by photos um, and videos to a to small extent to or to a large extent too i should say but, but the images are key and, and that's what you guys have to offer. So I think it is very fertile ground. You just need to be taught, um, you know, what to do, uh, how to approach it, um, you know, how best to look at it. So there is a tremendous amount to unpack here and a tremendous amount of questions that are going to arise, right? What are the questions? Should you be running those ads? Are they an effective source of traffic? What's the Facebook pixel? How do I get started? You heard this, that, or the other from your friends, but the whole doggone thing is so confusing. What about Facebook Live or geofencing or ad creatives, carousel ads? There really is like a tremendous, tremendous amount to unpack in this topic. And I think my favorite question that we get, you know, all the time more often than not, which is the one that I really look forward to addressing. And I got, I told one literally from a webinar we were running earlier this week and you know, the, the question is, hey, I read about Facebook advertising on the ASF forum. I tried it for a week, but pulled my ads because I felt like I was throwing money away. I know there's a huge gap in my knowledge. I want to learn more. I have seen various different iterations of that question so many times I can't even begin to tell you. And the sad way to answer it is I pulled my ads because I felt like I was throwing my money away. I gave it a shot. I spent some money and it didn't work. And, and sadly, in most cases, that's that's just absolutely the case. That's absolutely the case. I mean, I think most people, most art sellers, most artists that are attempting to get into Facebook ads, you're you're really just at the beginning. You're just you're you're just getting started. And so I'd like that I'd like to start the podcast out there. And actually, the webinar that that question came in is is is, is decent foundational content for getting started on Facebook ads. So I'll, I'll I'll include a link to that webinar for those that want to see it um, in in the show notes. So let's. Let's really just get into it and address, you know, all of these questions. I mean, now there's no way that we're going to even come close to addressing everything that you need to know in one episode, of course. It, it's going to take quite a few podcasts to cover them all, but 
I think if we start, you know, by peeling the onion from the outside first and, and start with the conceptual, then we can start working, working ourselves further down the line in future episodes. I mean, Facebook alone is such a complicated beast. I think, I think an entire art marketing podcast just in Facebook ads could probably be created and be really successful. So we'll, we, we, we've got a bunch of episodes to cover here. I, I, I'll, I'll try to do them sequentially, but we've got to start, we've got to start with the conceptual. I mean, I think you just can't get into them and knowing most of you and your journey are just getting started. You're intrigued. You've heard good things about Facebook ads. All your friends keep telling you to get on Facebook and get on Instagram and maybe you've tried it. I think there's so many people that are in that group that if we jumped right into tactics or strategies and we didn't cover the conceptual portion, you just, you're not setting yourself up to succeed. So I want to do that today. Um, I want to peel that onion back, cover a bunch of this stuff. And I do, you know, I don't want to make the entire episode uh, theoretical. I do want to add some actionable insights, the steps that you can take in your digital business today, the minute you get done listening to this episode. So I will include some of that at the end. And then I'm just going to try and cover it as much as I can and really kind of give you give you give you the the, the the conceptual the conceptual bits right now i'm going to throw out my usual disclaimer here and if you if you've been listening to this podcast or any of the webinars or any of the content we put out at art storefronts i always say this and i love it there's a right way a wrong way in the way we do things so i'm not necessarily telling you to do everything that i say but you can certainly use it as a pro as a proxy um, to inform the decisions that you make in your business there's definitely different strokes for different folks, but I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I thought through this presentation here today, um, giving it a decent amount of thought. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, excited to present it. So let's, let's, let's dive into it now and let's start why I think most artists fail and fail miserably at Facebook ads and what you need to understand before you get into them. So I believe that most art sailors fail with their Facebook campaigns for two big reasons. And both of these reasons kind of build upon one another and they're intertwined with one another. So let me ask you if this is you. You went onto Facebook, made some ads, perhaps you read a blog post, got a tutorial somewhere. Uh, your ads had discounts, coupon codes. They had buy me language in them. Uh, you spent some money on the ads and likely nobody bought. Nobody did anything. You probably didn't even get an email. Uh, you can't understand it, really. You thought it would be so easy. It's just like turning on a light switch, they said. Um, that's just not the way art sells. It's not the way art sells online. A few fringe examples on either side. Out of the picture, it's really not the way art sells. And I've been covering this on pretty much all of my webinars, all of my blog posts, but it bears repeating, and I have no problem repeating it over and over and over again because uh, I believe that's strongly in it. And there's, there's two two central concepts here to take away. And, and, and my analogy central over here, the one that I always use is you're in a bar and you walk up to this beautiful gal or guy and you immediately say, you know what would look good on you? Me. Come on and have sex with me. That's, that's the posture most take when running their ads, i.e., Here's this ad that shows my artwork. It's 15% off. You've got 24 hours to, ex to, 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 to exercise the coupon code. Buy it right now. Let me state it in another way. Let's say the same situation. And let's just say Bob is in a backyard barbecue and Bob walks up to Mary and goes, Hey, hey, how you doing? My name is Bob. So nice to meet you. What's your name? And before Mary can even get her, get her name out, get a word in edgewise, Bob yells, Buy my photograph, Mary. It's right here. And Mary's like, Wait, what? I, Bob, I just met you. And then again, Bob cuts her off and, and, and goes, it's 15% off, but you got to buy it today. It's 15, and, and, he, and he pulls it out of his backpack and he shows it and slams this giant photograph on the table in front of her. That's the way most people run their Facebook ads. And I think when you think about it through that lens and with that analogy, you're like, okay, yep, I get it. That does make sense. So most people roll their ads this way and... Every once in a while, you, you might get lucky, right? You might find a slut that likes to operate that way, but it's no way to build your business and it's no way you're going to see long-term positive ROI out of your Facebook ads. So that's, that's the, the, the first big reason is just in, in how you're phrasing the ads and what traffic you're going after and more on that in a bit. The second, the second one is you're just, you are not prepared nor outfitted to make Facebook ads pay. 
and this is this is this is a profound concept as well. So I'm, I'm going to of course need to offer up another analogy. But you're simply not prepared and outfitted to make the ads pay with your website. Let me explain. Give you an analogy. So I went to college in San Diego, and during during my years down there, my roommate and I had this 18 foot fishing boat. Right, we loved fishing, and right in front of La Jolla in San Diego is sort of a underwater geological phenomenon that just creates upwelling. I mean, it belongs on planet Earth, right? It's just like a, a, a natural phenomenon that goes on there. The end result of which is it's the best coastal fishing uh, pretty much in Southern California, and it's, and it's available year round. And when I say coastal, like, you know, a couple miles offshore, not taking the boat going way the heck far out. So, so, you know, one of these fish that you can catch that, that everybody loves going after is called a yellowtail. If you've ever eaten sushi, it's called hamachi. It's absolutely incredible fighting fish, like just such a pleasure to catch this thing, such a rush. But then it's also absolutely delicious to eat after the fact, whether you make sushi, whether you cook it, phenomenal, right? So everybody wants to go and catch this fish. And it's really hard to do anywhere else in California and especially almost impossible to do anywhere else in California year round. And finally, no question impossible anywhere that's not coastal, right? It's not like an island or the Channel Islands or like on your way to Mexico or whatever. So what would we do? My roommate and I would, you know, launch the boat, go to the bait receiver, get bait and go fishing for him. And I think over a three year span of time, maybe we got lucky and caught like one or two. And, you know, the place was such a geological phenomenon, we caught some other fish, but maybe we really only caught one or two of the ones that the yellowtails that we really wanted. And, you know, you can read from that situation, even a broken clock is right two times a day, or even a blind squirrel now and again finds a nut. That's, we got lucky, right? Right place, right time. Fast forward a few years now, and my roommate found a guide that actually did tours down there. Um, and so we booked him. And let me tell you, this dude was quite literally the fish whisperer. And that's, let's just call him that, the fish whisperer. He was so confident in his abilities that, and let me tell you, the, the age old adage is it's called fishing, not catching for a reason, right? The fish whisperer was so confident in his abilities, he guaranteed you your fish, a yellowtail. He guaranteed you one. And if you didn't get it in one day, occasionally you would have to go out too. But no matter what, he always, got, he always paid off and got his clients, like Yelp reviews through the roof, everything else. So we booked the dude and let me tell you, he did about 10 to 15 things differently than my roommate and I did when we were fishing back in the day. Now, granted, it was a little different because the whole experience was on kayaks instead of a boat. But let's just talk about some of the things that he did differently. First, the fishing rods themselves, the way he rigged the rods and the reels and the hooks and the weights and these fluorocarbon leaders and, and, and all of it. Um, it, was, it was just a little bit better and a little bit more advanced than what my roommate and I had going. For bait, he didn't just show up with the bait receiver and, and took whatever bait that, that he could get. He had he had, he had had to catch bait, so you make bait is what it's called, but you're basically fish for the bait fish. And he would only put the bait fish in the tank that were really robust and lively looking, none that were too small, only that were in great shape. He never put his hand in the bait tank. He was very, very rigorous about that. On and on and on it went like this where to fish, what speed to paddle the kayak, when to take the bait off and get a new one on so it was fresh and it was swimming quickly. And, you know, the, the moral of the story is there is a reason that this guy could guarantee his clients a sought after sport fishing experience. He was, he was set up to win. And on a, on a quick side note, I'll include the photo of the fish in the show notes. The first one pulled me on the kayak for over like 1.5 miles. It was a 45 minute battle. I could barely even move my arms afterwards. Unreal experience, unreal experience. So at this point, I, you know, I hope the, the fishing analogy is set in, right? Most art sellers that jump into Facebook and start advertising on Facebook are like my roommate and I fishing on our own. Might get lucky occasionally and have some fun, but it's just not a recipe for success and sustained success as you grow your business. In order to really win on Facebook, you gotta be like the fish whisperer and you have to understand number one, how art really sells online, right? Like what we went over before. And to pause for a second, because I forgot to mention it, I have two follow-up pieces of material to read on how art sells online versus how everyone else thinks it sells online. I'm going to put those in the show notes, but let me, let me keep rolling. So you need to be like the fish whisperer. You need to understand, you know, how art really sells online. But then also, you need to be set up to win. And you're not set up to win. So let's go over what that looks like. Most just show an ad 
you know, to a piece that they have on their website with a buy now language, maybe a coupon code. And what happens is if they're lucky enough to have written a good ad, a good image, good copy, the person might click on the ad, they look on the ad and look at, look at the, you know, the product page, there's the buy now button, everything else. They decide to buy, maybe they do, otherwise they leave. You had one shot to sell this person and when they're gone, they're gone. That's how most people do it. But where the fish whisperer comes in, he's a bit differently. So here's the difference between how this guy is set up and how you're likely set up. First of all, he has the Facebook pixel set up. So when that person comes to his website, looks at his piece, decides not to buy it and leaves, he's got a pixel on him. I'll explain more about that in a second. And he can now show ads to that person in the future. And he's set up to show ads to that person in the future. So already this person that came, saw his piece and left, he's now going to show ads to this person for maybe the next 30 or 60 days. Awesome, right? That's just one thing. You don't have lead capture in place. So you're not even trying to capture an email address. Did you have a pop-up on the intro that asked them for their email address to give them a discount? Did you have a pop-up on the exit intent when they were getting ready to leave the site that also might ask to get their email address? Because let me tell you, the fish whisperer does. Not only does he do that, he's got an email autoresponder set up. So when this person signs up for their email, day or night, 24 seven, rain, shine, snow, sleet, ale, whatever, this autoresponder is gonna fire off a sequence of emails that's going to educate this person about what kind of art this person is selling, what kind of art the fish whisperer is selling, how awesome it is, et cetera, et cetera. So he's also gonna start sending romance emails to this person. He's going to educate this person further about what his artistic process is, why he does it, a little bit of history, what his dog's name is, whether or not he likes going windy walks on the beach, whatever the case may be, you're going to introduce yourself. You're going to romance this customer. And all of this is going to happen because it's part of your normal marketing, right? Not only that, you're going to be doing the same on your social sites. You're going to encourage this person to follow you on Facebook. You're going to encourage them to follow you on Twitter or on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever, wherever it may be, right? And you're going to be discounting that work during the holidays. After you've built up a little goodwill, after you put some money in the piggy bank, i.e. goodwill in the piggy bank, then you're gonna go for a hammer smash. So if you're not doing all of those things, in my opinion, the chances are you're gonna have a very difficult time making Facebook ads pay. It's, it's, it's just difficult to do. You gotta, you've gotta be the fish whisperer. You've gotta get some of these basic foundational things in place to know that once you drive these new people to your ads, to, or to your, your experience, you, your brand, your art, you have to have the ability, you have to have the, you have to have the basic setup to be able to market to them in the future really is what it is, right? And the good news is it's not that difficult to set all this stuff up. And once you do get it all set up, you're in a position to win where you can go back in and instead of just putting that money in Facebook, getting no action, no love, no sales, burning through it, you actually stand a fighting chance right? You stand a fighting chance. And once you start to get really good at it, you start becoming more like the fish whisperer where you're guaranteeing sales and you're just pouring more money and more money and more money into advertising. And let me tell you, that's where it gets really exciting. And I think literally almost all of you guys could do this if you're, if you're willing to do the work and that, that, that little bit that, that that's not in almost everybody is just not willing to believe that art sells online. You don't, you guys do it. It'd be a waste of money. So you know, the, the, the next thing that I want to pivot to after that analogy, and I, ho I hope that was all clear, especially if you didn't, if you, don't, you know, don't really care, or never been fishing before. But there's this concept of traffic types, right? And as I was making my notes out for this particular podcast, I can, I can tell already that I'm going to just make this the subject of the next podcast on this because it, 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 it's worthy and it deserves its own, it, it, it deser deserves its own episode. But there, there are different types of traffic. Not all traffic is created equally. And the easiest way to think about it when you're, when you're running your ads is there are, there's cold traffic that you can go after, right? And, and, and let's just think of the, you know, the bar example again, I should say. Cold traffic are people that you've never met. They don't know you. They don't know a thing about you. They, they, they just don't know who you are. But they're in the bar. You like drinking, they like drinking. So, you know, it's a, it, it's a good prospect, but they're cold, they don't know you. There's warm traffic. Warm traffic has had some sort of an interaction with you. They know who you are, they're starting to get to know you. And then let's say there's hot traffic. Hot traffic is, not to have a salacious podcast, but the hot traffic are 
the ones that are just about ready to draw, jump into bed with you. It, it, it's almost there. They're, the relationship's almost good and consummated, but it's not quite there yet, right? So the biggest problem that people do, what most of you have done out there, and what most of what we see is you talk to cold traffic, to warm traffic, and to hot traffic with a hot message. A hot message that's really only going to work on hot traffic, which should be called a hot mess, right? So I think on the next podcast, we'll define these different traffic types, um, traffic types that are absolutely critical. And then, and then we can get into the subject um, of how best to attack these folks. All right. So what is, what is the takeaway, right? I told, I told you the whole podcast wasn't just going to be theoretical. I was going to give you a, a takeaway, a takeaway for today anyway. And I definitely have one. And I, I think it's you need to install the Facebook pixel. It's step one in this entire operation. What is it? Basically, you start, and I have a blog post on this. I'll mention it in a second. But you start a Facebook ads account. It's free. It doesn't cost any money. You have to put a credit card down, but it will not charge you anything. You install the Facebook pixel, which is a line of code. You have to place it in a certain portion of your website. What that's going to do is it's going to recognize the visitors that you have coming to your website and then match them to their Facebook profile. What that'll allow you to do is basically place these people in a bucket, for lack of a better term, and you're going to be able to show ads to them later. Um, remember, I, like I mentioned with the fish, fish whisperer, you're going to be able to show ads to that person that came to your site before um, and left. So it takes time you know, for this audience to build in a meaningful size. And so there's really there's no time to waste. It's, it's in terms of like a, a best practice, Anyone that's serious about digital marketing, the minute the site goes live, the minute the new entity goes live, and okay, if you you know you've been live for a while and you just never put it on, before you're even thinking about getting into Facebook advertising, before you're even thinking and thinking, and you would never d get into it anyway because you haven't heard the rest of my pieces on this, right? Ha ha ha! But before you even think about it, get the pixel up and get it running because it's going to give you the best opportunity to succeed. And again, that audience takes a while to build. Now, how do you do that? If you're an ASF customer, we make it insanely easy, and I have a blog post that talks about it. Whether you are a customer or not, I've got a blog post that talks about it, how to do it, the steps you need to go through to get this all done. It's relatively easy to do. It's really easy if you're an ASF, but relatively easy to do regardless. And get it in, get it installed, let, let it start gathering information and let that audience build, and it's just gonna be there waiting for you. It's gonna be there waiting for you um, once you learn all the steps that you need to do before you start advertising on Facebook. And I really do encourage you to listen to the next few podcasts. Whatever, whatever bits and pieces of my advice you take, if you do go through this stuff, you are going to be in a way better place. Whether you're spending $2 a day, $10 a day, $100 a day, you're going to be in a way better place. And by the way, you can do amazing things with $5 and $10 a day. But you're going to be in a way better place to succeed and actually stand a shot to make, to make it a sustainable part of your marketing. And, you know, the, the most important thing in here is, is, is please let me continue to educate you to keep you from jumping into Facebook and making Zuckerberg any more damn money. He has enough. He does not need donations from you or your art business. So let's not donate any more money to that guy, uh, despite the fact he did build this incredible platform to advertise on. Uh, not that I don't like him. He just, he's got enough money. doesn't need yours. So there we go. Facebook Primer, thanks for sticking with me. I hope I left you with some actionable intelligence. Uh, links for everything that I mentioned. All the fancy bells and whistles will be in the show notes. A couple of different ways that you can get those. One, you can just go to the Art Marketing Podcast. It's artmarketingpodcast.com. And on that site, we've got links to the episodes. This is going to be episode number two. So you can just go right to number two. And you can get in there and you know you can download the show notes if you like uh, as a PDF. Or you'll have all the links there. And then you can continue to check out those materials. For those of you that are mobile, want to get the link to the episode, the show notes, all that jazz, we've got a we've got a text in number that works pretty well, um, and a bunch of you guys used it on the last episode, which is really cool. But if you type in, uh, just send a text message on your phone. the The number that you send it to is the number four four two two two. So again, four four two two two, and the message that you send is A M P for the Art Marketing Podcast Z Z Z Z is in zebra. So A M P Z Z Z. Um, you can send that to the number four four two two two, and we'll send you an email back, and then and then give you a, a link to a direct download to them, so you can check it all out that way as well. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.